dear students today we will be discussing about hydrogen energy our today's key discussion includes hydrogen nh properties the different techniques used for hydrogen production storage of hydrogen conversion safety issues and its applications now let us learn about hydrogen and its properties first so hydrogen is an energy carrier and not an energy source as we have to derive hydrogen from other sources the electrochemical extraction of energy from hydrogen via fuel cell is an specially clean method of meeting power requirements in order to realize hydrogen economy production delivery storage conversion and end use applications are to be considered very very precisely when we say hydrogen this hydrogen includes hydrogen in pure form or in molecular form and other hydrogen derived from synthetic methane or maybe ammonia this hydrogen is odorless and colorless gas and it has simple and lightest atom with one proton and one electron and its molecular weight is 2.016 okay so these are very very fundamental things we must know when we are talking about hydrogen energy now let us compare hydrogen fuel with other available and commercialized fuels so here for comparison we have considered gasoline and natural gas so first if we talk about density which is represented by kg per cubic meter so this is very very less in case of hydrogen compared to gasoline so its value is about 0.0837 whereas in gasoline it is 730 kg per cubic meter and for natural gas it is 0.78 kg per cubic meter and boiling point of hydrogen is minus 253 which is equivalent to 20.3 kelvin so minus 253 is the temperature scale of degree celsius for gasoline it is 38 to 204 degree celsius and natural gas is minus 156 degree celsius if we compare lower caloric value in kg per cubic meter so it is about 125 whereas in gasoline it is 44.5 and natural gas is 48 almost three times more value is with hydrogen so that way we can say the quality of hydrogen is very very superior and also we can extend our discussion with higher caloric value so it is about close to 142 in case of hydrogen and gasoline it is 50.8 and natural gas is 55 unit is megajoule per kg that flammability limit in case of hydrogen is very very wide it varies from 4 to 75 and for gasoline it is 1.4 to 7.6 and natural gas it is 5 to 1. to 16 so what does this flammability limit means is the amount of combustible gas in an air mixer when the mixer is flammable so this is what we define as flammability limit also we need to know what is flame speed flame temperature and flame luminosity so flame speed is also very very high in case of hydrogen compared to gasoline and natural gas and flame temperature you can see it is in between gasoline and natural gas which is about 2045 degree celsius 
and flame luminosity is low that means flame is not so bright okay so it is something like invisible flame so that's how it is very very difficult where flame is there or not when we are considering safety of the combustion of hydrogen but this brightness is high in case of gasoline flame followed by natural gas let us now learn about its classification how this can be classified it may be classified as gray hydrogen when we call gray hydrogen when the hydrogen is generated through steam methane reforming using natural gas or fossil fuels in case of blue hydrogen when we call blue hydrogen when the hydrogen is generated through steam methane reforming with carbon capture using natural gas or fossil fuels we also have green hydrogen when the hydrogen is generated through electrolysis using renewable electricity we have yellow hydrogen when the hydrogen is generated through electrolysis using solar power we have pink hydrogen when the hydrogen is generated through electrolysis using nuclear energy and we have turquoise hydrogen when the hydrogen is generated through thermal splitting of methane and this is also known as methane pyrolysis and here at the end what we get is the solid carbon instead of carbon dioxide this is how this hydrogen is classified now we are moving towards hydrogen energy systems which is very very crucial in order to consider as hydrogen as a very important fuel for today's market this is popular because it's clean reliable and affordable energy that can enhance economy of our country then environmental concerns and energy security and most importantly hydrogen is non toxic and recyclable if we talk about this hydrogen energy systems this includes production transportation storage conversion and application so design and application of hydrogen economy must carefully consider in each of this segment as well as the whole system so we can produce hydrogen by using different renewable resources it may be solar it may be wind it may be geothermal energy or maybe nuclear energy biomass energy or maybe fossil based fuels and we can store in different forms it may be liquid form it may be gaseous form or we can store hydrogen in metal hydride and once we convert to different forms we can transport it or maybe we can transport it through pipelines or maybe we can transport it through cylinders and then we can have conversions so from hydrogen we can think of maybe ammonia or maybe other fuels as per requirements and then we can think of applications what are the different applications of this hydrogen and this application includes maybe stationary or maybe mobiles okay so when we are talking about hydrogen energy systems it includes the entire systems this will be more clear when we study the further slides so here i am trying to emphasize more on hydrogen value chain here we include production conversion processing and transportation and uses so we can produce hydrogen by using fossil based fuel it may be natural gas coal biomass when we are trying to use hydrogen by using natural gas we have to use a method called steam methane reforming 
when we try to use or try to produce hydrogen by using coal and biomass, then we have to go for gasification technologies, where we are providing insufficient oxygen for complete combustion of all the element present in the fuel. Then of course, we need PSA system to clean the unwanted or maybe clean the hydrogen, because finally, what we want is the hydrogen. And also, we can use renewable energies and nuclear fuels to produce hydrogen by using different routes, maybe water electrolysis or sometimes we can use the heat energy to produce hydrogen. So, we can provide different condition at different stages and finally, we can produce hydrogen. And once we produce hydrogen, then we can use it straight away in a pure form or we can do some kind of processing to convert this hydrogen to liquid form. Maybe you can see this figure here. So, we can liquefy by using cryogenics and we can store in geological storage in underground salt caverns or we can have some kind of cylinders and also we can store in metal hydrides. Okay. And here we can also think of conversion like if we are transporting this hydrogen then in gaseous form it is very very difficult. So, we need to convert to other form like ammonia and then we can do the transportation and we can no transfer from one place to another. And also we can go for methanation where hydrogen and carbon dioxide reacts at high temperature in presence of catalyst it produces methane and water or we can produce methanol. And once we are done with this then we can think of uses. So, it can be used in transportation sector, maybe in industry, maybe in buildings or maybe in space applications or maybe in power generation. Okay. So, these are different application of fuel cells. So, each and every component need to be checked very carefully in order to achieve what is called hydrogen economy. Now, let us pay more attention about the different techniques used for the conversion. So, first thing is the thermochemical conversion of fossil fuels by steam reforming or partial oxidation. So, what different kind of fuels can be used? It may be natural gas, coal, methanol, gasoline etcetera and biomass and these are decomposed to obtain hydrogen. And here carbon monoxide is generated and this carbon monoxide is to be illuminated by promoting water gas shift reaction. And we must know this route of hydrogen generation causes carbon dioxide emission. That is how it is not sustainable and people are looking for alternative techniques to produce hydrogen. In the recent times, electrolysis using energy from nuclear or renewable resources are gaining popularity because of carbon neutrality. What are different resources we can use for electrolysis process? It may be solar, it may be wind, it may be geothermal and also we can use nuclear energy. Right? Also sometimes the heat what we can generate by using different means can also be used for production of hydrogen by using a technique called thermolysis. Water splitting is also possible through biophotolysis process using solar radiation. 
and this process like splitting of water by different techniques like thermolysis and biophotolysis is a clean and sustainable route of energy supply. We will also learn what is biophotolysis in the coming slide. Now, let us quickly learn about thermochemical process which is used for hydrogen production. Basically, the process is known as steam methane reforming. Globally, if we see like more than 95 percent of all the hydrogen is produced by steam methane reforming process. Here high temperature steam it ranges from temperature 700 degree Celsius to 1000 degree Celsius is used to produce hydrogen from a methane source it may be natural gas. This methane reacts with steam under 3 to 25 bar pressure it is a high pressure in presence of catalyst to produce hydrogen. Nickel catalyst is used for this purpose and this steam methane reforming process is an endothermic process that means, we need to provide energy from other sources. Since we need to promote water gas shift reaction there what happens the carbon monoxide and steam are react with a catalyst to produce carbon dioxide and hydrogen. In the final process called pressure swing absorption this carbon dioxide and other impurities are removed from the gas only hydrogen is supplied at the exit pipe. So, that is how this hydrogen is produced through steam methane reforming process. So, if we see this equation like steam methane reforming reaction this methane reacts with water and we need to provide heat and it will produce carbon monoxide and hydrogen. And in case of water gas shift reaction carbon monoxide what is generated in the steam methane reforming process reacts with water it will produce carbon dioxide and hydrogen right. As I said before in the gasification process we provide insufficient oxygen for complete combustion of all the element present in the fuel. So, that is how in partial oxidation or gasification process if we consider methane reacts with half of oxygen we produce carbon monoxide and hydrogen of course, it is generated. But in case of combustion process this methane reacts with O2 then it will be carbon dioxide okay, and then water vapor at the product side that is how it is mentioned in case of partial oxidation. Now, move on to the electrolysis of water. This is one of the simplest method of hydrogen production and this is not cost effective as thermochemical methods using fossil fuels or biomass. It is a big challenge how we can develop the strategies and material to produce low cost hydrogen by using this method. And this method allowed for more distributed hydrogen generation and opened the possibility for use of electricity generated from renewable and nuclear sources for hydrogen production. As you can see this block diagram here all the resources are placed in the first block and here we can produce DC electricity and that is directly used in electrolyzer where water is supplied that is water has to be split to hydrogen and oxygen and then we need to store it. It may be in the gaseous form or it may be in the liquid form or it may be in the metal hydride and then finally, we can use it based on the requirement in different 
applications. It may be utilities, industries, residential, commercial or transportation. Let us see how it works. So, if you see this figure here in electrolysis process we will have two electrodes. This is commonly flat metal or carbon plates and this is immersed in a aqueous conducting solution called electrolyte. It is aqueous KOH. Okay? And here we need to provide direct current to split H2O into hydrogen and oxygen. So, hydrogen will be available in cathode and oxygen will be available in anode. Right? So, for doing this splitting process we need to provide voltage. So, it is found that a minimum of 2 volt per cell is required to split hydrogen and the energy requirement is something like 3.9 to 4.6 kilowatt hour per cubic meter of hydrogen production. About 60 to 70 percent of this energy what is provided is actually utilized in electrolysis process. That is how the efficiency of the electrolysis process is about 60 to 70 percent. And of course, there are other techniques to increase the efficiencies. Say for example, by using catalyst such as porous platinum or nickel, we can improve the efficiency up to 80 percent. And here a diaphragm which is made of woven asbestos prevents electronic contact between the electrodes and passage of gases. So, here we need to have some kind of diaphragm. Okay? And this method is most suitable when primary energy is available as electrical energy. That is how we must know develop the understanding like we need to provide electrical energy. Right? When we have heat source then we need to think of some other methodologies. Otherwise, so first you generate heat then electricity then electrolysis it is not so efficient process. But if there is no other options then we need to go for that kind of method as well. So, this is an specification of electrolyzer like as you can see electrolyzer type is alkaline dry cell then what are the electrolyte then sodium hydroxide then what is dimension then weight then number of stakes number of plates then plate dimension then operating conditions operating current operating voltage then power consumption then production rate is something like 3.29 liter per minute and efficiency is 48 percent and capacity factor is about 2.62 milliliter per watt per minute. Just to have some idea about the electrolyzer if we have to specify electrolyzer this has been presented. Now, as I said before when you have very high temperature source then we can use that source for generation of hydrogen. That means, this direct thermal decomposition of water is more efficient than conversion of heat to electricity and then using electrolyzer to produce hydrogen. But only thing is we need to have very high temperature. It should be more than 2500 degree Celsius. So, here for example, I have compared some efficiencies like in case of thermal power plant its efficiency is varies from 32 to 38 percent is and electrolysis efficiency is 80 percent and thermal electrical then hydrogen production its efficiency reduces significantly and maximum we can get about 30 percent. So, in this process thermochemical cycles can be devised to split water into hydrogen and oxygen at substantially lower temperature than direct single stage 
or single step water decomposition. This thermochemical cycles involves sequential chemical reactions where water is taken up at one stage and hydrogen and oxygen are produced in different stages. The efficiency of conversion from heat energy to hydrogen through thermochemical cycles is better than its conversion through electrolysis when the upper temperature of the cycle is above 700 degree C. Just for one example, here we have chromium dichloride reacts with HCl at 325 to produce chromium trichloride and hydrogen. And the next step chromium trichloride decomposed to chromium dichloride at 875 degree C and chlorine is produced. And finally, this water is supplied and this water reacts with chlorine at 850 degree C it produces HCl plus O2 half of O2. So, that is how we can produce hydrogen. So, here we can produce hydrogen at 325, but we need to follow all those steps. Okay. We can also give an example of this thermolysis process. So, cerium oxide two step cycle here you can see finally, we are producing hydrogen here cerium oxide actually no reacts at certain temperature it produces one element and then oxidation stays and this element reacts with water vapor again produces another element plus hydrogen. Okay. So, net reaction will be water actually no splits to oxygen and hydrogen, but this happens in different stages and also we can give an example in case of copper chloride hybrid cycle. So, same thing happens. So, we can if we can have host of chemical reactions and finally, net reaction will be water splits to oxygen and hydrogen. So, this is how we can generate hydrogen if we have heat source. Also, we have one more method of hydrogen production which is known as biophotolysis. In this method, the ability of the plants namely algae to split water during synthesis process is utilized. An artificial system is devised which could produce hydrogen and oxygen from water in sunlight using isolated photosynthetic membrane and other catalyst. Since this process is essentially a decomposition of water using photons in the presence of biological catalyst, the reaction is called photolysis of water. In this process, three distinct functions or three distinct functional components coupled together. First one is photosynthetic membrane. Here you can see in this example, chloroplast is used as photosynthetic membrane. Here light is absorbed and water is split into oxygen, electron and protons. In the second case, we will have an electron mediator is reducible by photosynthetically generated electrons and here electron mediator is paradoxin and we need a proton activator which accepts electron from reduced mediator and catalyze the reaction. So, here proton activator is hydrogenase or platinum and finally, we can produce hydrogen. So, it is something like two, two protons plus two electrons which will give you hydrogen. So, this is how it happens. So, people are working on this method 
but it is not so popular so far. There are many scope of doing research in this method of hydrogen production. Now, let us come to the hydrogen storage. As I said before, it may be compressed form, it may be liquid form or it may be metal hydrides. In liquid form, it occupies about 3.8 times the volume occupied by gasoline. And in case of gaseous form, it occupies about 3.6 times the volume occupied by natural gas. Okay? So, for large scale storage, we need to go for underground facilities like natural gas cavern also or salt cavern. Okay? And for low or moderate scale, hydrogen is stored in a strong steel tank or cylinders and that can be transported. And in case of liquid form, we need to go for cryogenic condition and about one third of hydrogen content or one third of the energy content of hydrogen is lost in this process. And in case of metal hydride, hydrogen can be stored at high densities in reversible metal hydrides by following the process of absorption and desorption. The metal hydrides offer the advantages of low pressure storage, comfortable shape and reasonable volumetric storage efficiency, but have weight and thermal management issues. So, these two are primary issues in case of metal hydrides, but it is very safe form of storage. And we must know some of the desirable properties of metal hydrides like metal should be inexpensive and this hydride should contain a large amount of hydrogen per unit volume and per unit mass. The formation of hydrides from metal by reaction with hydrogen should be easy and the hydride should be stable at room temperature. The gas should be released from hydride at significant pressure and moderately high temperature. For example, we can discuss three promising hydrides like lanthanum nickel, you can see which is reacts with hydrogen in charging and it produces lanthanum and then six elements of hydrogen plus heat and if we provide heat then again we will get hydrogen back. Then iron titanium you can see this reactions surging and discharging you can get back if we provide heat and magnesium nickel you can see this kind of reactions. Now, let us come to the delivery of the system like how to deliver. So, if range is 300 kilometer then it is suggested to transport hydrogen by high pressure cylinders. If the range is about 1500 kilometers then how to transport it? Transport as a liquid fill in super insulated cryogenic tankers what you can see here in the figure. And this hydrogen delivery is the key element in the overall hydrogen energy infrastructure. That means, starting from point of production to the end use of the device. Okay? So, these are very very interesting. Also, at present this hydrogen delivery techniques or technologies are very very costly and improvements is required in the areas like fueling components, then material selections for pipings and transportation containers for hydrogens. And as we are concerned about conversion of hydrogen to useful form, we can use metal hydride technologies to fuel internal combustion engines to produce mechanical and electrical energy. 
for hydrogen oxygen combustion for steam generation for electrochemical conversion in fuel cells that generates electrical and thermal energy and also for catalytic combustion. As far as applications are concerned, we can use it for internal combustion engine, for Z engines, electrolysis, then vehicular swells, then we have in rockets or satellites. There are few concerns about safety of hydrogen. Hydrogen poses risks if not properly handled or controlled. It has greater tendency to escape through small holes because it is a very small particle and very low ignition energy about one order of magnitude lower than other fuels and hydrogen flame is nearly invisible. Okay. This is quite interesting. Sometimes flame is there, but we cannot see if we touch it then it will be like burning. Risk of coal burns in case of liquid hydrogen and hydrogen onboard vehicles may pose a safety hazard. So, these are things we need to check always because safety is first. And I would like to just mention about national and international status in hydrogen production. Here as you see the global demand which is increasing with time. So, here we have considered from 1975 to 2018 you see how demand of hydrogen is increasing and also global hydrogen production is really increasing. So, here we can summarize like almost entirely supplied hydrogen is produced from fossil fuels and 6 percent of global natural gas and 2 percent of global coal is utilized to produce hydrogen and production of hydrogen is responsible for carbon dioxide emissions and there are 228 large scale hydrogen projects announced globally in the recent times and 17 of these projects are really very very huge and India Reliance Industries and Gautam Adani like founder of Adani group they have also announced their plan about hydrogen production unit. And this map shows about uh, global hydrogen project science. So, you can see at different color codes. So, we can find out how many projects are announced globally. Okay. So, now we can summarize the today's discussion. So, we have studied different techniques of hydrogen production that means steam methane reforming electrolysis, thermolysis and biophotolysis and also we have studied different methods of energy storage and its safety and also at the end we have studied the national and international status. So, these are the references we have used while collecting the information. So, thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you.